Good morning. It's the Call Flow Radio Show, and you're on the air. Well, you can be uh, if you give us a call at 434 That's the number for the Call Flow Radio Show. It is your Friday, July the 19th already. I'm Chris Wood, and with me is John Staten. Good Hello. morning, John. Hola. 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 Uh, <laughs> how's the week been for you? This is the first time we've been together. Yeah, we're, we, they, we don't play nice together, so I've been relegated to just one day out of the week. Oh, you. dang on it. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it's been, uh, I hate to say it because I don't want it to go bad, but uh, been, this week's been... Relatively. Yeah, smooth. Smooth, yeah. yeah. No, no bumps. No not bumps. yet. That's day's that's, not over yet. That's though. good. Well, we've gotten some much needed rain. Yes, I have uh, a little over two inches in my rain okay. gauge so far. Guess I better empty it <laughs> and uh, we'll wait for more. Looks like my deck staining is going to be called off too. Probably yeah, so. Probably so. But anyway, that's okay. The majority of it is done anyway. A lot of stuff getting called off with. The, the oh, news I this know morning. that, uh, and it would be interesting to to know about uh, you know the the grid and yeah. IT stuff well, going. They, there's a glitch claiming there. claiming it's not a, an attack or anything like that. Meaning someone Cyber purposely attack. doing it. Yeah, they're, they're, that's what they claim. But that's pretty scary stuff, though. It is. And you know, sometimes we take things like this for granted mm-hmm. that everything is going to work just fine, and then. Boom. They yeah. say the power goes out. Sounds like Dan Albus. He I says know, that in the spot. I know. <laughs> I realize that. Yeah, but you know, uh all of all of the stuff that we uh that we put online and is is at risk as far as I'm concerned. So that's I why saw I, something I, that's this like, I like a paper trail. Yeah. It was something about uh deeds to your house or something. It was a commercial I saw this morning talking about someone can easily just I don't know, manipulate something, and then they end up... Owning your house. Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. It's pretty scary. It is. Yeah. I mean... They, they can get get away with stuff like that. Sure. You know, and, and that's what people do these days. You know, they try every, every you know, some people, I should because say. Because supposedly it's just one piece of paper. It's not like a whole lot of documentation like you would think it probably would be. It's, mm-hmm. just, it's just one form. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. a real. But it seems like to me if you're living that you should have some sort of proof that it's yours, I would think. But I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's why you keep the deed to your. Yeah. <laughs> the paperwork. Right. That's right. But anyway. So, uh, what do you folks think about uh, you know all of this How's that's, your that's going on? How you know what's going on with the world these days? Mm. And I did not watch the um, convention last night. You did not? No, I didn't because for one thing, um, all the so all the media is going to do is just you know rip it rip it to pieces anyway. I wonder why. Well, you know why. But anyway, <laughs> I've already made my decisions about who I'm going to vote for and what my convictions are. So I, I don't need to um, – they say that, he, that Trump was more subdued. Yeah. No, I, no didn't, I didn't stay up for it. I couldn't uh, when you have to get – to work early, <laughs> you can't stay up. I can't. Mm-hmm. I can't do well, it. Well, I can't either. I was in bed. So by I just 9:30. saw a couple of clips, highlights early this morning when I first got up. Uh, they said he was for the most part. He may have went back to his normal self, maybe the latter part, but but not to the degree, I guess. That he, I mean, whatever he says, everybody's got their own ways of how they take him. I've never really been bothered by anything he says. Or does. I, I mean, he's a, he's first and foremost not only a businessman, but he he was on TV for a long time doing mm-hmm. that show, The Apprentice. Mm-hmm. He's an entertainer. He knows how to rile people up, whether it's for him or against him or whatever you want to call it. So, I mean, I don't know. To, well, perfect example, he had Hulk Hogan at that event, the wrestler. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Hulk Hogan's at the podium and – and to me, what I was going to equate it to him is sort of like a wrestler. 
you know, if you if you ever watched wrestling back, you know, what they would do is they'd look in the camera and go, I'm going to rip this guy's head off and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. <laughs> and either and if you were for the guy that was talking, you were loving it. And if you were a fan of the other guy, you didn't like him. And I, I think pol- politics is a lot like wrestling. It's, mm-hmm. it's fake. <laughs> Meaning, meaning they they talk a good game, and it looks like they're really going after each other. But it's probably behind the scenes, yeah, it's all choreographed, and they probably hang out at the same bar and whatnot mm-hmm. after the fact. That's right. Well, I know they do because I've seen pictures. Oh, okay. Of John Boehner, there was a guy that he used to cry all the time. He was with the on the Republican side. He used to do all. You know, oh he, yes, yes, yes. There's yes. a picture I saw on the internet years ago. It was so it was they were supposed to be mortal enemies. Him and Pelosi. And yet I saw a picture where they're just hanging out laughing and just having a good old time. And I'm like going, okay, okay, I see. It's all a stage. I'd say so. I mean, but, you know, I don't know. But, you know, and that's kind of sad when you've got, you know, the the world and people, Americans, you know, depending upon some of the decisions that you make for their livelihood and things like that. So, (laughs) Well, yeah, 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 well, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it, and I I don't know. I just It's like one of those things where you, you look around and you know, and you're I actually experiencing what's going on. But yet you're being told, "No, nah, everything's fine." Well, what's what's the, what's the problem? Mhm. Yeah. It's like, you know, who who are you going to believe, me or your own eyes? That yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> that kind of thing. You got that right. Sometimes now the nowadays with AI and all that kind of stuff, the Oh, yeah, they can... can't really believe your own eyes sometimes. Uh, yeah. All right, let's get off that subject since, <laughs> you know, we have talked about that probably enough mm-hmm. and no calls yet. So, okay. Uh, let's go back to our history lesson here. In 1848, U.S. women's suffrage movement began. On this day in uh, 1848, the women's suffrage movement in the United States was launched with the opening of the Seneca, um, Seneca Falls Convention, which sought to gain certain rights and privileges for women, notably the right to vote. Okay, that's uh, that was our featured event for today. Okay, and we'll go down to uh, 2014. American actor James Garner, who was perhaps best known for his roles in the television series Maverick. And the Rockford Files died at the age of 86. He was one of my favorites, too. There's a channel that shows the Rockford Files. And ever so, I think it's on Sundays I catch it because there's really nothing else on. <laughs> and so I, I'll watch the Rockford Files every mm-hmm. once in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and he did, uh, you know, some, some good movies as well. Yeah, yeah. He, he did. Well, the last thing, or one of the last things he did, he was in that Notebook movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I didn't know until I caught it on TV one night, just flipping around channels. It was a night I couldn't go to sleep or whatever. And uh, I ended up watching it only because I spotted him. I'm like going, well, why is James Garner in this newer film? Mm-hmm. And, and it turned out to be that film, The Notebook, which when it came out, I did I, it wasn't on my radar. I didn't pay any attention to it. It's a great movie. But when I, you know, but I was watching it solely off of the fact I saw him, mm-hmm. and and that's so I ended up sitting through. I mean, I caught about mid early to midway through. I didn't see the whole thing, but but I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, he did. Uh, he also did that uh, Maverick remake with Mel Gibson back in the nineties. I mm-hmm. want to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've always liked James Garner. He good actor. Uh, yep. I mean. He, uh, he had a good charisma to him. That's why people like him and Paul Newman, they may seem like themselves in everything they're in, but you like their character. Yeah. John okay. Wayne falls in that category. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, just Clint Eastwood falls in that category. Yep. And um, <clears throat> so does um, Gunsmoke. Uh, J- uh, James, James Arnaz. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Same, same thing. All right. Well, let's uh, move along to 2007 when the first episode of Mad Men – Aired and the series, which starred John Hamm, quickly became a critical and commercial hit, noted for its nuanced 
present representation of social life in the 1960s and for its stylish visual flair. Did you watch that show? No. <laughs> okay. I did not. I caught it. They used to run it on one of those channels on Sunday mornings. This would have been after it had already been on. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it was in syndication. Yeah. But it may have still hadn't left the net. The, you know, it might have still had newer episodes playing at the time. Maybe. I don't think so. By then, I think it had already done its initial run. Yeah. I got into it, but I will say it's not a typical type show. It's um, very little humor. It's more of a serious kind of thing. Mm. And uh, not the type of show I normally watch, but. Christina Hendricks or whatever her name was, that helped to get through. Very <laughs> okay. nice looking lady on uh, that show. All right. 1980, the Summer Olympics opened in Moscow. Mm. Though some 60 countries refused to attend wow. because of the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan mm -hmm. in 1979. It was the largest boycott in the history of the Olympic movement. And we've got those Summer Olympics coming up next week, I think. I believe in so. In Paris. Yep. So. Pelly. Mm -hmm. Pelly. 1965, American wild animal tamer Clyde Beatty, who was known for his fighting act, which was designed to show his courage and mastery of uh, ferocious animals under his control, died at the age of 62. And it doesn't show or doesn't tell exactly how he died. But uh, a tiger never talks. A tiger or a lion yeah, never whatever, talks yeah. either. Uh, 1947, Aung San, uh, Burmese nationalist leader and prime minister, was assassinated in Rangoon. And let's see what else. 1922, American liberal Democrat, uh, Democratic politician George S. McGovern, who served as a U.S. senator and was unsuccessful candidate for the presidency in 1972, was born in Avon, South Dakota. Uh, 1903, French bicyclist Maurice Guerin won the first Tour de France, which covered 2,428 kilometers or 1,508 miles. Tour de France. And uh, let's see here. In 1886, Hungarian piano virtuoso and composer Franz Liszt played the piano for the last time at a concert in Luxembourg. And in 1870, the French emperor Napoleon III declared war on Prussia, beginning the Franco-German War. So that's your history lesson, folks. I hope that you can at least comprehend a little bit of that. Put it in the forward lobe of your brain there. Let's see. Okay. 434-394-0924 is the number to call. It is open mic on this Friday. It's Friday again. We've got birthdays coming up the bottom of the hour for mm -hmm. today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It's 21 minutes after 8 o'clock and... Let's see what we can go to as far as entertainment news is concerned. Harvey Weinstein dies, or do, Harvey Weinstein um, do in New York City courtroom for a hearing tied to upcoming retrial. Mm. Okay. So that's some, in some entertainment news. Oh, comedian Bob Newhart. Mm-hmm. He has passed away. Had not heard about this until this morning. Well, I didn't catch it until I pulled that up. He was has, was the deadpan master of sitcoms and telephone monologues. And uh, he dies at the age of 94. And we were talking about that with Chris Brochon. How many people we, we've... It was Shelley Duvall we couldn't think of. That was another person who has just passed away. Actress well, Shelley Duvall. At, well, Shelley Duvall, that's right. Because we mentioned uh, Richard Simmons. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Sh Shannon Doherty. Shannon Doherty, Doherty of uh, 90210. Mm -hmm. And it was, yeah, it was it was the other actress I just said. <laughs> uh, Shelley Duvall. 
who was in Poltergeist, was in that Popeye movie. If you remember that, Robin Williams played Popeye. She was olive oil. And some people say that was probably the best casting mm-hmm. ever of a comic book character because she looked like olive oil. Olive <laughs> oil. Newhart best remembered now as the star of two hit television shows in the 70s and 80s that bore his name, launched his career as a stand-up comic in the late 1950s. He gained nationwide fame when his routine was captured on vinyl in the 1960s as the button-down mind of Bob Newhart, which went on to win a Grammy Award as Album of the Year. I think Chris was saying that he has that album, and it's signed by Bob. He got to meet him. He's, he got a backstage. Well, he went to the see him perform, and he went mm-hmm. backstage and met him and had him sign a few things. And if I said Shelley Duvall was in Poltergeist, I meant The Shining. I don't the know. The Shining. If, okay. I just wanted to correct myself. Okay. Correct. I, I correct myself all the time. <laughs> I stand corrected. It's one of the things that I do. I sit corrected as well. <laughs> Uh, while other comedians of the time, including Lenny Bruce, Mort Saul, Alan King, and Mike Nichols, and El- Elaine May, frequently got laughs with their aggressive attacks on modern uh, mores, Newhart was an anomaly. His outlook was modern, but he rarely raised his voice above a hesitant, mm. almost stammering delivery. His only prop was a telephone used to pretend to hold a conversation with someone on the other end of the line. I remember that. It's so funny. In one memorable skit, he portrayed a Madison Avenue image maker urging Abraham Lincoln to quit tinkering with the Gettysburg Address and stick with his speechwriter's draft. <laughs> oh, me. Okay. Uh, let's see. You changed... Four score and seven to 87, Newhart asks in disbelief. Abe, that's meant to be a grabber. It's sort of like Mark Antony saying, friends, Romans, and countrymen, I've got something I want to tell you. (laughs) Um, Another favorite was merchandising the Wright Brothers, in which he tried to persuade the aviation pioneers to start an airline, although he acknowledged the distance of their maiden flight could limit them. Uh, you know, well, well, see, that's going to hurt our time to the coast if we got to land every 105 feet. <laughs> so that's what he said. Anyway, he was he was funny. Him and Don Rickles were big buddies, and I remember mm. whenever Rickles would be on the Tonight Show, usually with Jay Leno or something like that. Leno would always bring up the fact that they were friends, and and Rickles would go out of his way to say, yeah, we go on vacation together. But he'd always take a dig at him. Right. Always. Yeah. I never really liked Don Rickles. See, I do. See, see I act, I'll admit it. I'm more of a Rickles fan than I am who we're just talking about here. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not that I don't like him. I just, I like, I prefer Rickles type of humor. So I, I do find it interesting that w- comedically they're very different. But yet they were real close mm-hmm. in real life and hung out and vacationed together and all this. I always thought that was interesting how, you know, comedians you wouldn't think or anybody that doesn't – you wouldn't think would have anything in common. They they tend to do have things in common. And the ones you think would have things in common, a lot of times they don't. Not, you know, because they're – they may have similar humor but not, you know, the other things that go along with it. But – yeah, I, when I saw that this morning, I, I, I even asked Brochon, I was like, did this just happen? And he said it happened, what, yesterday? Or yes, it, I think it was I, yesterday, I, yeah. Well, the Bob Newhart Show premiered October the 11th, 1961. Despite Emmy and Peabody Awards, the half-hour variety show was canceled after one season, a source for jokes by Newhart for decades after. He waited 10 years before undertaking another Bob Newhart show in 1972, <laughs> and that's the one that I remember. And that's the one I remember too. But didn't they end that show where he 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 wakes up and it, it's just a dream, and he's with the wife from the the other show? Could be. I think that's how they ended it. Yeah. Roshan could tell us for sure because he's the bigger fan. But I'm almost positive the the latter show that you and I are talking about that we remember. <laughs> I want to say that they ended the episode where he wakes up. 
from a dream and, it, and he's in bed with the wi- the other wife, yeah. not the wife of the not current Suzanne show. Not Suzanne Pochette. Yeah. Uh, that, she was, um, let's see. In this 1972 show, it was a situation comedy where Newhart played a Chicago psychologist living in a penthouse with his school teacher wife, Suzanne Plachette. Their neighbors and his patients, notably Bill Daly, as an airline, was an, an airline navigator, were a wacky, neurotic bunch who provided an ideal counterpoint to Newhart's deadpan commentary. And um, I wonder if... The, I can't remember who his wife was in the first. I think I thought she was the first wife, and it was somebody else that was the second wife. But maybe I'm misremembering. Oh well, I don't know. It's been it's been a while. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, the show was a huge hit. It uh, lasted eight seasons on CBS, mm-hmm. and uh, it bowed out in a more memorable style in 1990 with Newhart in his old Chicago psychologist character waking up in bed with Plachette. Yes. Yes. That's it. Cringing as he tells her about the strange dream he had. <laughs> Meaning the whole eight-year show that he <laughs> had That's just been right. on. Yeah. I thought that was a cool idea. Yes. To was, end the show. That was uh, that was genius. That was a genius. Okay. Well, enough about um, Bob Newhart. Now, he will be missed. Mm-hmm. As, uh, but... Uh, at the age of 94, he, he um, uh, had a series of sh- uh, short illnesses mm. that that um, took him away from us. So sad about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're about to the bottom of the hour. So let's uh, get back to some weather that uh, we need to give to our folks, a weather forecast. All right. And we've got the birthdays and anniversaries coming your way as well. This edition of The Weather is brought to you by the Bank of Charlotte County. Hello, I'm Stuart Wilborn, manager of the Bank of Charlotte County Loan Office in downtown Farmville. With over 30 years of banking experience, I'm here to help you finance your commercial, agricultural, or personal project. Give us a call at 391-1136 or stop by our downtown office at 216 North Main Street, where you'll find old school personal assistance with attention to detail. The Bank of Charlotte County, giving you more for your banking needs. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Let's look at the forecast. For today, we'll see partly sunny skies and a chance of some showers developing, just a slight chance. Look for a high today of 85 degrees. Tonight, we'll see a low of 68 degrees with a 40% chance of showers. On Saturday, that chance increases to 70% with a high around 81 degrees. On Saturday night, 60% chance of showers with a low of 67. Sunday... We go from a 20% chance to a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Look for a high of 87 degrees. On Sunday night, a low of 69 with a chance of thunderstorms at 40%. Monday, still a chance of some showers and uh, likely from 30% to 60%, a high of 86 degrees. Monday night... We'll see a good chance of some showers and thunderstorms, likely with a low of 68. For Tuesday, mostly cloudy, with showers likely at 60% and high of 87 degrees. Outside, your humidity is 87%. Our winds from the north, around 6 miles per hour. Barometer up a tad at 30.10 inches. We do have a dew point of 67 degrees. Our skies are overcast right now at 71 Degrees. That's your weather forecast brought to you by the Bank of Charlotte County with branch locations in Phoenix, Charlotte Courthouse, Brook Neal, and their loan office in downtown Farmville. That's our weather. It's time now for our birthday and anniversary calendar brought to you by Terry Atkins Wilson. PC. The law office of Terry Atkins Wilson PC is located at 117 North Main Street in downtown Farmville. With deep roots in Farmville and our surrounding communities, Terry and her legal staff specialize in real estate law, wills and trusts, business formations and collections. Experience and professionalism are extended to every customer in every case. The needs and concerns of every customer are their primary focus. If you have legal needs, contact the law office of Terry Atkins Wilson PC for a consultation at 434 392 
Hey, I like that other um, birthday. You like the jazzy the one? The jazzy one, too. <laughs> I did that as a, a thing. Uh, for for uh, Noah? Yeah, because he, he, he kept saying something, can't we get another birthday bid? And I was like, oh, I don't know. We've been sticking with this one for For lots eons. of years. Yeah. yeah. So one day I just looked for one that was kind of silly sounding or different sounding. Different, And, and yeah. this guy was on the piano mm-hmm. and uh, playing all these different variations of it. And he starts off kind of jazzy at first. And mm-hmm. I thought, oh, that'd be interesting. So mm-hmm. I trimmed it a little bit, but uh, it's like two minutes long. But it, like I said, he if you listen through the whole thing, he changes it up, the arrangement each time. Mm, okay. But it starts off very jazzy. I'll have to listen. Yeah, we'll pull More it up closely. next time if you want. Oh, well, that's up to you. Okay. Okay, well, we've got the birthdays for today, mm-hmm. tomorrow, and Sunday to tell you about. And one special birthday for today. Do you want to start off with a special? I want to start off with a special. I thought you would. Do you want to announce it? I will announce it. It would mean okay. more if you did it. Happy 10th birthday to Harrison Ellis Eways of Charlottesville. He's my youngest grandbaby, <laughs> 10 years old today. Now, how do you refer to him? Do you... Call him Harrison, Harrison. or do you, have, you do? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if you no had Harry. Like it. No, or no, 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 no nickname. No little nickname, no nickname, nope, nope, nothing. Just, okay. Just Harrison. Just curious. Yeah. And he is a doll. He's going to break some ladies' hearts <laughs> when he gets a little, when he gets older. But uh, he's a cutie. He's on swim team. He and Lila both are on swim teams. Lila's, Lila's birthday is uh, the 13th, so they're six yeah. days apart. And how old will she be? Lila's turned 12 last week. She's older. Okay. Yeah, she's, she's – Okay. Mm-hmm, they're two years apart. All right. We also have Eddie Gunn, Howard Jenkins, all celebrating today, by the way, Friday the 19th, Bailey Jamerson, Michael Smith – Alex Flowers Pinnell, Michelle Mooner, M U N I R, Munir. I, I, I'm not sure. M U N. Munner, maybe. Um, I it, would. I would say. I don't. I don't know. I'm not, I may have hit one of them. <laughs> the variations I've used. I, if I've pronounced it wrong, I do apologize. M U N I R. It could be Munir. I think. It, I think Munir. that sounds really good. Okay. Munir. Mm-hmm. Munir. Mm-hmm. All right. So I don't think we have the the other list anymore. So I think we're good with just going off the calendar. So those are the birthdays for today. And, yeah, I've, I've got variations of <laughs> how to look through stuff. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Now, Saturday the 20th, we've got Chaley, Gabriella Reeves. I'm assuming it's pronounced that C H A. L I E. Is that Chaley? Chaley. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gabriella Reeves. And we have an anniversary couple for tomorrow, the 20th. Corey and Jennifer Bowler. Corey, C O R A Y. That's, I would pronounce it like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. So now <clears throat> we're on to Sunday, the 21st. Melanie Adams, Clyde Childress, Teresa Adams, Jeff Church. Brooke Baldwin and Nicholas Owen Toombs having birthdays for today, tomorrow, and the next day, Sunday. And that's all we've got. But if you'd like to add, give us a call, 434-394-0924. Otherwise, send birthdays, anniversary names to birthdays at WFLO.net. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. The birthdays. <clears throat> and been brought to you by uh, Terry Atkins Wilson for the right legal advice. Go visit her at her office on Main Street in downtown Farmville. All right, I believe we have a call here. Good morning, you're on the Call Flow Show. Good morning, Chris and John. Good morning. Good morning, Allie. How are you today? I was just thinking about you. Were you? I bet you think I'm crazy. <laughs> no, I was thinking about my love pops. I've got them right here. They're on the speaker at the radio station. My oh, butterfly cool. and my flower that. pot. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I sent, so that's why I did it the way I, I did it. But I, I'm keeping a list now, so that's much better. Oh well, they're they're they're, they're lovely. They're delightful. Thank you. Well, thank you. I mm-hmm. love to bring you some joy. 
I'm calling because I sent in an anniversary for Sunday the 21st. Uh, I don't recall seeing anything. Doesn't mean we didn't get something. But since you're on, do you want to go ahead and present it to us? Sure. It's Pastor Billy Swan and Brenda Swan. It's their anniversary Sunday the 21st. Billy Swan? Mm-hmm. Okay. And his wife's name again? Brenda. Brenda. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. I apologize for not grabbing it. That's okay. I I think I sent it last week or something, both to you and to the other one. To the well, movie. I had a list, but uh, let's see. Wait a minute. Hold on. These things get sandwiched. <laughs> Sorry. Don, you need a big calendar. You need a well, big desk blotter. <laughs> I'm foolish in thinking, oh, I'll put it uh, the way I want it, and that'll stay that way. And then other hands get a hold oh, of it. Yeah. I'm not throwing anyone <clears throat> under the bus, <clears throat> Noah. But uh, <laughs> I'm, let's just say that, okay. I, and I do have it in front of me. So you did send it. I did write it down, but I didn't hide it from myself. Some, oh, okay. Somebody else did that. But that's still okay. my fault. And you are right. Pastor Billy and Brenda Swan on the 21st, Wait. having their anniversary right. Sunday. And I know Noah's not there, but I thought I'd bring this but, uh, while we, I'm thinking about it's it. It's okay if you want to talk bad about him. He, he's, <laughs> no, not, he's not. He's not listening. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just joking. He was talking about he don't want to bag his own groceries. What? <laughs> Monday. Remember, he was talking about he didn't want to bag his own groceries. I think it was Monday, maybe Tuesday. Okay. Anyway, I thought that's what he said. <laughs> I love bagging my own groceries. I use the reusable bags, mm -hmm. and it makes it so much simpler when I get home. That's to right. Put the groceries away. That's right. So I'm a fan of that. And if they ever go to that, like they did, I think New Jersey, I'd be ready. It wouldn't bother me a bit. Well, I love it because I, I've got these. Uh, uh, I have these insulated bags that I use for my cold stuff. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I can just pack it and pack it and pack it in there. And then I know exactly where my cold stuff is. So I can put that all in the refrigerator, the freezer, and anything like, like that. And I've used those. I uh, use the green front bags, you know. Okay. When, yeah, they're 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 this, these burlap bags that are huge, and they hold everything, and they're very strong. And so I was fortunate enough to make some purchases at Green Front, so they gave me you know, those bags to use, and and I use them all the time. Fantastic. Yep, I love them. I'm, I'm a big fan. If they ever do that in Virginia, I'm all set. Very good. I think yeah. Except I like to do it because the new kids, they don't really know what to goes and what. <laughs> so cleaner and with your groceries. That's true. I'm that like, are you crazy? Yeah, yeah. Because I've actually had dish soap open before and make one heck of a mess. Oh, yes. Yep. And I used to bag groceries. When my father had um, Clevenger Supermarket in Narrows, Virginia, I was um, I would check out. I would work the checkout, and I would bag the groceries and everything. And and so I I I know how you feel when somebody does it and does it wrong. You know, yes, just right. kind of throws them in there. But I was always meticulous about that. Okay, I believe they're calling me about my computer, so I need to get the phone. And it was great talking to y'all. You have a great weekend. All right, you Allie, too. have a great one. Thank you. Thanks. Uh huh. Um, bye bye. Bye bye. She, thanks to her pointing out that that had been sent, I missed one other birthday that's also on the twenty first. Marie Adams. Of oh, Marie. Marie, I know Marie. And hers is on the twenty first. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to make mention of that. All right. That was on that list that was hidden. Hidden from me somewhat, somehow. Okay. All right, let's take another caller here. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Um, I have another birthday for tomorrow. Okay. Um, his name is James G.E. Brown. James Brown? James G.E. Brown? J.E. J. E. Brown. Oh, J.E. Brown. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, he lives in Lynchburg. In Lynchburg? All right, and that's for tomorrow, the 20th. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, thank you. All right, mm -hmm. thank right, you. Bye. We appreciate your call. Mm, bye bye. Uh huh. All right. Another I think if birthday. we just do birthdays all the whole hour, we'd probably get more calls. Well, because we tend to miss, if we miss somebody, it's going to guarantee a call. Yeah, maybe so. So maybe from now on, I'll just start purposely missing birthdays. No, don't do that. I'm just joking. I know. I know. But we couldn't do that. No, I wouldn't do that. No. 
But uh, anyway, that was, um, was it James J.E. Brown? I believe so. Okay. They're having a birthday uh, tomorrow. Lynchburg. All yep. right. Lynchburg. Having a birthday tomorrow. All right. Now, what were we talking about? You were talking about mm. Noah? What were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, we were talking about Noah tucking away my Oh, sheet, tucking away here. Yeah. My piece of paper here. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, yeah. I, so there's two different styles of doing the birthdays. Mm, okay. And here's how I do it. <laughs> okay. This is how Noah does it. I've okay, learned, hold on. I've hold learned on. this today. Oh, he puts them in the back. Ah. So, but when I but when I go to look to see if maybe it's mm, ah, nothing, that, nothing. Where there. did I find it? Uh-huh. I found it right there. Uh huh. Okay. That that happened. All right. That was a thing. Well, you know what I'll do. What's that? When I come in, just my three mornings, I'll <laughs> check it for you. Make sure that everything is. And he left me a set a paper towel of some <laughs> substance of is that coffee? What is that? I don't know. I hear him trying to throw me under the bus when I'm not here. Oh, really? So this is what we call payback. Oh, okay. I'm just, I'm just messing yes, with Yes, I know you are. I know you are. We love Noah. Yeah. We love you, too. Anyway, uh, the number to call, 434-394-0924. That's the number to call for the Call Flow Radio Show, and it is your Friday. Mm-hmm. Friday pizza night for me. Is every Friday pizza night yes, for you? Yes, it is. Funny that sometimes that happens to me, too. Uh, my ne- I see my nephew on Fridays. That's our scheduled hangout time. Mm-hmm. And uh, if it's not McDonald's, it's it's pizza. Mm-hmm. And so that I can guarantee having pizza at least once a week by him asking for pizza. Right. Last well, week we had pizza. Mm-hmm. Well, I go, to, I go to the store mm-hmm. on, usually on Fridays. And I'll pick up these um, the, the 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 plain cheese frozen pizzas. It's mm-hmm. just you know one. Do you have a block. certain type that you prefer? Well, it's just um, I can't think of the name of it right now. But anyway, I'm a Celeste person myself. Oh, you are. I, I like Celeste. Yeah, Francis used to like. Um, oh, jeez. Baron. Yes. Yeah. Red, not Red Baron. Is the Red Baron? Yeah, I think it is Red yeah. Baron. Yeah, he used to like that. Yeah. Anyway, I I make my own basically. I just okay. take. Sometimes it'll have pepperoni on it. Sometimes I usually can get just the plain cheese one. Mm-hmm. And I take it home, and I get take it out of the freezer, put it on a pan, slather it with um, garlic. <laughs> <laughs> you put it like in a round pan or no, squared it's, off? It's it's rectangular. That's it's, what my grandmother did, and she would put hamburger on it. If yeah. I remember right. Yeah. Or you could put sausage on it. I I didn't care for the hamburger all that much but but she'd make it some plain for me but but i do remember her putting hamburger on it every once in a while yeah i'll put salsa on it Mm -hmm. and uh let's see black olives onions mushrooms and lots of mozzarella on Mm -hmm. top of it even though it's still got some cheese on it i think we got another birthday maybe oh maybe okay but anyway so that's pizza night is pizza nights tonight all right cool Okay. Good morning. You're on the air. Oh, oh, good morning. Um, you guys were just talking about pizza. Yep. And I know. Um, so I just had to call in and uh, I guess talk about it. Okay. Do you um? <laughs> do you do you make your own, you don't make your own crust then? You guys just buy a, um partially assembled? No, I don't make my own crust. Okay. I trust Celeste and I just right. put it in the microwave. There. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I trust her and her pizza perfection. Okay. Microwave. You got it. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> if it, if it doesn't go in the microwave, it doesn't go into my stomach. Oh. <laughs> some, of, some people know how to cook and then others were, what's the word I'm looking for? Spoiled? Rotten oh. and had wonderful women in their lives cooking for <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> Man, that's part of the fun of cooking, just being a crappy cook. Yeah, well, what do you like on your pizza? You something that tastes. What do you like on your pizza? Oh, uh, usually it would just be um, pretty much straight up cheese. If I buy it outward somewhere at a uh, a, a place, it's just cheese. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Sometimes onion, um, but um, I do like a, um, a, a 
Oh, gosh. The sugar. Um, uh, margarita pizza. I've never heard of that. Neither have I. Oh, it's just um, basically, um, you can get, it can be cheese or oil, but um, it's just uh, tomatoes sliced and um, basil. Mm-hmm. And just a dash just of margarita simple. on top of it? <laughs> oh, no, I don't know how they got that. I don't oh, know. Okay. Uh, we need some more yeah. margarita in the mix here. Yeah. <laughs> just a dash uh, more. Uh, All right, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, oh, there goes the top. Oh, 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 we spilled a bit. <laughs> okay. This All pizza right. is really good. Yeah, I, I like uh, I like uh, I like green peppers, maybe sometimes, mm-hmm. and, and and cherry tomatoes. Okay. I love roasted garlic. Okay. <clears throat> I've got to pick up some roasted garlic or roast my own or the other. Are you, m- mushrooms? I don't like mushrooms on my pizza. Much. I love mushrooms. You do? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so and, and, and when I put it in the oven, it says to heat it, preheat it and bake it at 400. Mm. I bake mine at like 325 because it's got so much stuff on it. Right. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Uh-huh. That, uh, you know, I ha- I, when, the, when the oven starts and the, and the odor, the aroma starts wafting through my house. Wafting. It just, it, it's, uh, it's heaven. <laughs> yeah, and have to, you know, give it time for everything to really cook. So it takes right. a little bit longer. <clears throat> yeah, um, I I like the crust that's, like, so thin and crispy that um, you can just hold it by the um, the edge, by the actual crust on the edge. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, it stays straight. It doesn't sag and have all the goopy and, yeah. Yeah, so you like a thin crust pizza. Oh, my crispy. goodness, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Heavens. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, thin crust so. is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I have my grandchildren, or whatever, and I will buy the pizza dough, mm-hmm. and we'll make our own, you know, pizza. Right. But uh, I like using okay. instead of the tomato sauce, I like using the salsa. You like instead. salsa. Though. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, sauce instead of All the tomato right. sauce. Yeah. But anyway, so that's you know. Don't forget the tequila. I mean the <laughs> <laughs> the margarita. Man. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> you know, I um, <laughs> uh, just the uh, last time, um, no, it must have been on the fourth. We had the uh, utility company had come out to um, our our power went out, and utility company come out and uh, they were working on the property, uh, replacing some something on the top of the hill, uh, pole. So we went out and um, offered them a few bottles of. Um, just water, bottled water, out of the fridge. Mm-hmm. And um, they refused to take it. They said it's a policy that they're not allowed to accept anything from the public. And according to this guy, um, they must have been down in Houston. Maybe that crew, maybe somebody from the company was down in Houston, and uh, they were offered water. And um, somehow somebody, uh, according to them, had injected uh, fentanyl into the bottle. Oh, are you and there were kidding me? That died. Oh, my. So, well, th- this is the odd thing about it is that well, um, it's an isolated it sounded a little case. odd. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I went online to, to see if I could find the story or find any story in reference to. And, um, you know, it would be, oh, it's a old wise tale or it wasn't true or no facts available. So um, I'm wondering if... It really did happen, or if it truly was just this um, story that somebody had created. And had you guys heard anything about that? No. No, but but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. Um, But I'm not aware of it. Yeah, I could picture that happening. It's it's kind of reminds me of like the um, remember when you were a kid? That oh, don't eat that apple. Might have a razor blade in it. That was I was going to bring that up. That was a thing about Halloween. I remember as a kid that the parents yeah. always had to check your candy for. I, I I think my mom just said that so she'd eat some of the candy, but <laughs> but she well, needed to check the candy first to see if, for what you just said, razor blades and all this other stuff that may be inside the food. But I. I kind of researched it a little, and I ended up, what I could find, it um, never really happened. Unless that, so, unless, unless, like you said, it's just some something he heard in, in, in passing and just 
thought maybe against it and or maybe that was just his way of saying no thank you I, i'm not going to partake in taking any water i don't i don't know though i mean you can speculate as to why well, somebody would make something up like that but i don't know it seemed like to me if you just go no 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 thanks we're not supposed to take any or whatever that'd be enough i don't know why you would invoke yeah, a story uh-huh. like that but who knows well they probably had their own water anyway I'm, I would assume yeah, so. More than like a, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a, yeah, you know. it's one of those things. Even if you don't have it, you can, you can just kind of, you're even if you're at a party and just, you don't have it, you just offer it because you know they're going to say no. Right. Or like you know somebody that will, will never go to that place with you and just to sound like you're being kind, you yeah. just offer them the, um, the uh, hey, want to go? And you're like, oh, God, I knew you'd say no again, <laughs> thinking to yourself. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, you have to be careful these days. That's, you know, that's for sure. And the uh, best way to be sure is to just take your own with you. Yeah. And at least you know that, you know, and, and keep, you know, keep it close to you so nobody can slip anything into it. Yeah, but then again, I, yeah, yes, I can truly understand that. But then how far do you have to go back till uh, you find out that, um, in your opinion, it may um, not have been tainted? You know, was it the water supply coming into the, the bottling factory? Was it it happened at the bottling plant? Mm. Did it? Um, I'm just being cynical. Well, any anything's possible so. these days. That's right. Uh, I think. I mean, yeah. Any, anything. Could, well, it's like the people that find supposed stuff in cans and and drinks and stuff, or or food. You know, you hear these weird stories every so often that the they'll see like a chicken head or something or something weird in the food that they were given. And it's like, well, where did that come from? You. <laughs> yeah. You know, but there are stories like that. I don't think they happen, but so often I hope, but, um, yeah, every once in a while you get these weird stories. Mm-hmm. I mean, even my, <clears throat> I remember a nasty one with my sister, something about something was in the salad one time, you know, type uh-huh. of thing. We'll just say a bug. Yeah. Of some yeah. Kind. Yeah. You know, stuff like that does happen. Well, sure, especially in salad. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, na- nasty why I nasty grow, salad. That's why I'm beginning <laughs> to grow my own greens, and I pick them and I wash them thoroughly before and make sure that there's nothing. You don't find that in no baked <laughs> potato, I can tell you that. <laughs> but if, if you can imagine um, how much food is processed yeah. and how little we actually find... I guess if it's small stuff, you know, like the uh, peanut butter that all that. It's all going down, down the same way. You won't taste it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's good for you. Delicacy. <laughs> Holy cow! So. Well, don't they have like on the ingredients that some stuff might be mixed in, like uh, oh, let's just say things you don't want to talk about. I like in potato chips and stuff like that. Be. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. I, oh, I thought see, there was like like be. in the fine print on the well, bag. Well, like in potato chips, flammable because of the oil. <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't <laughs> know. Chips. Never thought about oh, yeah, that. Yeah. So here's a question then. Let's say if you're eating something, okay, a restaurant, and you find a hair in it, do you send it back? Yes. I just I just don't partake. No, I, did, I, I, I lose had, my appetite. I had that happen to me one time. Yeah, but that, but after uh-huh. that, I, I've lost my appetite. Well, yeah, you do lose your appetite. Uh, and there's no I, point in taking I, it I back said. because I'm not going to eat anything else anymore. Yeah, for a while, <laughs> at least not there at that moment. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Huh. Old old John's going to go fasting real quick. Yeah, but I'm, I let the people know. Do you? Okay. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. Because it was huh. not, it was nasty. My luck, I say something, I get the whole <laughs> wig next time it comes back. <laughs> uh, well, mm. Mm. yeah. Then are you um, guys believers in the um, don't send it back or somebody will mess with it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I think like that. Because I, I don't know, mm. I just have this thing of this is a little undercooked and they just sort of take it back, let it sit there for a while, and then bring it right back out again. That's just my. That's what I'm thinking happens a yeah. lot of times. I mean, who knows? But that, and sometimes you see these scenes in movies, what people are doing. Now, <laughs> and, and I don't know, those, those, those kind of things stick with me sometimes. You guys uh, have imaginations like, you know. Well. Well. 
I, 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 I guess I just don't have that much faith in the human person. Uh, I just, uh, I don't know. Oh, well, anyway. That, I, I, I hear, it's, well, that, and I know of people like Noah and other people that are in the food, you know, industry, whether, it's, you know, it's actually being in the kitchen and all the, and you hear about the three-second rule and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and it's like. I thought it was the five second. Uh, whatever. Well, <laughs> it's two seconds off. It doesn't make all that much difference. But Well, it does to oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> so you won't even think longer than five, but three's okay. Three's okay. Okay. Oh. I don't. I just hear enough horror stories of actual things that it's just like. Uh, Man, basically, basically, you're flavor. taking your own risk when you eat out. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Uh, we all do, I guess, is what I'm saying. Haven't had that much of a problem. Well, that's good. With uh, you know, with that uh, stuff in your food and, and, and you know, not being. Cooked or uh, well, every once in a while. What just was that Seinfeld episode hand. where there? I think it was George having soup and there was a rubber band in it. I know who's cooking today. Maybe it was Jerry. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember who it was, but they found a rubber band in the soup. Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, that well, uh, we don't have time to get into this, but I do remember. I think it was. Um, oh. Uh, one of the shows, everything goes out of my head when I when I want to talk. But anyway, she yeah. was making asparagus soup, and she left the blue rubber bands on the asparagus, and mm-hmm. it, it, it turned the water blue or something mm-hmm. like that. Oh, it was. Uh, I never mind. I'll, I'll, I'll think of it after the That's show, fun. of course. Yeah. The um, by by gr- my grandmother was a, a horrible cook, and she would make um Thanksgiving dinners. Horrible. So um. <laughs> so, Grandma, that's, that's, is this um, the same one that was throwing cigarette butts to the birds? <laughs> yeah, actually, it is. Yes, so she, she sounds was, like um, a, a character. I, I think I would have liked to have met her. <laughs> so, so one Thanksgiving, very quick Thanksgiving. Um, mm-hmm. I, I one Thanksgiving, I think it was my dad that had cut the um turkey, and she still had the um bag of um parts in it. Oh yeah. You know how they used, they used to stuff the um, the giblets, no, that kind yeah. Of yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, right in there in the plastic bag. That happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we've got to go. Yeah. We're past the okay. news anyway. We appreciate your call. Have a good weekend. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. All right. Uh-huh. Bye. All right. We got to get out of here. All righty. Okay, everybody. Watch have a great weekend. Eat. Thanks for. Uh, Tune, calling in and, mm-hmm. and tuning in, yep. and it was it was fun, but we're gone. Bye bye. WFLO AM eight seventy Farmville.